Peace y'all, it's Letitia with Peace and Food and today I just wanted to like have a little chill chat with you about some of my favorite spiritual books, um, different books that may have helped me on my path and books that I will share with you. I really believe that learning is a never ending thing. You're a lifelong student, I mean, if you choose to be. I feel like I'm a lifelong student and I love reading new books. I love learning about new things. And these are some books that have um, crossed paths with me and I love to revisit them and maybe reread the whole book again or even just read an excerpt. Sometimes I'll grab a book off the shelf and I'll literally just turn to a random page and it'll give me something that I need. So let's just get started. My first recommendation or book that I love is The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. And this book, I essentially took it from my mom. She had a whole set and these are different philosophy. In this book, there are different philosophies on life. That, and he gives you just like little pieces of wisdom. <laughs> That's the best way to describe this one. And I always loved it because it comes off to me as very poetic. And the information or like the advice is really cool. So I'll turn to one of my favorites. So... Um, on giving so each there's a chapter on each one basically on love on marriage on children on giving on eating on working on joy and he just gives like little pieces of like gems like drop the mic after you give that a piece of advice because it's so simple yet like amazing like the simple advices that we forget to take are usually the ones that we should take. But anyways, I'll read you this little excerpt. Then said a rich man, speak to us of giving. And he answered, you give but little when you give of your possessions. It is when you give of yourself that you truly give. And there's more, but just that, those few sentences, like, yes not talking about giving things but actually giving of yourself and being like selfless that's what i take from it so that's one the prophet i'm gonna list all of these down below and find links for you to buy them as well the next book on my list is one of my faves um by louise hay i have i love a lot of her books but this one the first one I read from her was Heal Your Life, um, but this was my next favorite, The Power Is Within You, because I think I let someone borrow that book. Or actually, that book wasn't mine. I gave it back to the owner. Oh, so when I first stumbled upon Louise Hay, someone recommended her to me. And she's under the category of self-help and honestly i wasn't sure at that moment this was probably like 15 so years ago that i was ready to get into self-help i think there's a stigma attached to some of those maybe not anymore back in the day i feel like there was a stigma attached to like self-help books and things like that um and I was pretty like, okay, what can this woman tell me? That was my mindset back then. <laughs> Stubborn old me. But anyway, this book really teaches you, or I just say Louise Hay in general, may she rest in peace or transition peacefully wherever she is now. She's no longer on the earth plane, but she taught a lot about affirmations and healing yourself from within and just concepts that I wasn't familiar with back then. And again, simple gems, but like mind blowing. So for example, with her, she teaches you to write your own affirmations and like reprogramming your mind to like change how you think. 
change your thought process and then everything else will change and fall into place. So she has some amazing things, excuse me, amazing books. The Secret. Right now, this book might be a little corny, however, <laughs> And I say that because um, the law of attraction has caught on and it's very trendy and it's very out there right now. And when this first came out, it wasn't. So the documentary on this was the first that I experienced with it and then I purchased the book. And I can tell you that this helped me tremendously with um, with certain things in my life that I was trying to bring forth and I was kind of down and out and not being positive about it. So this book helped to change my mindset. Again, it's all going back to your mindset and your thought process and how that's gonna help you get further in life. So this just gave me a little bit of um, definitely more faith more and more hope in myself. So the secret, if you are familiar with it, it's all about the law of attraction. They talk a lot about making vision boards, vision boards, which I love. And really just talks about having that process where you really believe that what you want to manifest is going to come into fruition. So that book is a great start. The Four Agreements. Get this book. Get it, get it now. <laughs> so The Four Agreements is another one of my favorites. Uh, it's by Don Miguel Ruiz. So he is, I don't know what he is. He's an author. <laughs> so he talks a, about four things that can really help you. Obviously, these are mostly all self-help books and um, spiritual books, like I said. So he talks about be impeccable with your word. Don't take anything personally. Don't make assumptions. Always do your best. So he talks about these main four lessons where if you are very mindful of how you interact with the world, it can help you tremendously, again, to have the best life you can possibly have. Now, I'm not saying these books are the end-all be-all or a cure for a horrible life or a broken life, but they're tools to help you. And I truly believe that um, you have to help yourself. You have to... Um, find ways to heal yourself on all levels, whether that's on your mental level, whether you're dealing with depression and, and anxiety or other mental issues. Uh, if it's on the physical level, are you dealing with some disease that is very harmful to you or are you just dealing with aches and pains? And on a spiritual level, do you have practices in place that are helping you spiritually or are things really um, not going right for you in that area? Are you working on it? And today I actually had a conversation with someone who, you know, we are, we talked about the information being there. There's so much information, so much information. It's overwhelming. It can be overwhelming. Uh, but if you don't do anything with that information that you have, it's like, are you just passively learning something or are you actively learning something or are you passively working on something or are you actively working on something and everyone's different. I always have to point this out because there are going to be people who say, well, not everyone has to work on, you're not a work in progress. You know, you're fine just as you are. And yes, this is true. No one is telling you like, oh my God, you're the worst. You need to work on everything in your life. But if you are someone who is, I'll say this, someone who's always complaining and not help, happy with your life and living from like a victim mentality, 
I don't really know what to tell you, then maybe this video is not for you. I just look so shiny. Let's keep moving on because I can go on forever. I have five more books. Eckhart Tolle, The Power of Now. So Eckhart Tolle, he is another like self-help person out there. And this, again, simple gems. Live in the now. Now. <laughs> the now is where it's at. <sighs> Try your best to stop worrying about things that have happened in the past that you have no control over. If there are things that have happened in the past, Look for ways to heal them. Look for ways to, um, to see them in a new light. Same with the future. If you are always worried about tomorrow, always anxious about tomorrow, how is that serving you? It's not serving you whatsoever. It's not, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. Definitely not because I have anxiety. I worry about tomorrow. However, if you can like snap yourself out of it and be like, let me stop worrying about this. Everything is going to be okay. Everything is okay. I have enough. The universe provides enough for me. You know, it's just about realizing like, oh, I'm here, the here and now, that's all that exists really for me right now. So should I be happy? Should I be sad? I mean, it all really depends and everyone is different. We all go through phases. Hell, I feel like I went through one week of like, I can't believe I'm living through this whole Corona thing. Like, wow. You know, we looked at movies when we were growing up and we read books, like science fiction books about things like this happening and we're actually in it. So it's like, yeah, I go through anxiety, but I really try to, to get myself out of it, to pull myself out of it. And it doesn't happen like that sometimes. Sometimes it does. However, just be present, be present, be as present as possible. <laughs> and that's what I got from that book. Moving on. This one is a cool one. So Egyptian, um, Cosmology, The Absolute Harmony by Mustafa Gadala. So he has a whole bunch of books that if you are looking into Egyptian met metaphysics or Egyptian cosmology, he breaks it down in like, I don't want to say in layman's terms, but in a way, yes. But there's still some really great things in here. This was more so when I was leaving religion. If you had the chance to watch my first podcast episode, I talk about religion and spirituality with the Soulful Veganista. And her and I discuss how we grew up in church and how we've uh, transformed our spiritual practices over the years. And this was one of the things that I explored. I wanted to look into different religions, different spiritual practices, and Egyptian cosmology was one of the ones that I was fascinated with. And this goes into some detail, which I love. It talks about ma'at and the balance of the cosmos and just all different types of things, the netters, um, who are the gods and goddesses who represent different aspects of nature in Egypt cosmology. So that one's a cool one. I'll have to show you all the other ones I have from his collection on another video. Next is amazing. So this is Sisters of the Yam, Black Women in Self-Recovery by Bell Hooks. Now, most if you know who Bell Hooks is, she is a feminist author who was or is super amazing super popular super just like a huge figure for black women and um healing themselves or black people in general her books are woof. so sisters of the yam is a book that explores community within the black community that made no sense 
community, <laughs> community within the black community. So yes, but amongst women and how we heal ourselves and how we can heal ourselves and if we should do it together, which we are moving towards more community-based activities. Activities may not be the, the right word, but right now with whatever is going on in, in the universe or in the spiritual realm, it is time to get together. It's time to work together. It's time to have more community. It's time to really love your neighbor, which sounds corny, but it is. <laughs> it's true. So she just talks about, let me just turn to a page. Um, she talks a little bit about relationships. So relation, relationships with yourself obviously a relationship, self-love, self-care. She goes into depth about relationships you may have with your family, with your um, significant other, relationships with different parts of your body, relationships with the earth. Because essentially it's all connected. I say this all the time. It's all connected. If you love your body, I feel like you would love Mother Earth and take care of her way more. Um, so, yeah. But this is a great one if you are looking to heal, heal yourself on all levels. And I'll say this, you know, books, humans write books, you know? Take everything with a grain of salt. I'm not telling you to agree with everything that's in this, these books because, you know, I don't agree with what everyone says in, in these books. However, they do have those little pieces of wisdom that I will take from them. I recently read a book where, honestly, most of the stuff I read in that book, I did not, I wasn't feeling it. But there were a couple of things that I took and I was like, okay, I can take that. Next one, the ancient secret of the flower of life. So if you've been following me for a while, then you know that I have this fascination with sacred geometry. <laughs> so I love sacred geometry. I have to have, I don't even know what arm it is. I have the Flower of Life tattooed here. I have Metatron's cube. I have the Vesica Pisces. I'm very, I don't know, there's something about sacred geometry that just pulls me in that I've loved over the years. And this one, this is one of the first books I read on sacred geometry. Um, this is by Drew Nvalo. I never remember how to um, pronounce his name. Melchizedek. Junvalo Melchizedek? <laughs> anyway, I'll write it and connect down below. But this is volume one. I have volume two as well. He talks about the connection with sacred geometry in all of the universe, essentially. He talks a little bit more about other things and other experiences that he's had um, that um, you go read it and see for yourself. He just talks about getting these downloads or meeting these certain beings and getting uh, pieces of enlightenment from them, pieces of information, and especially about the flower of life. So he he is very versed on like the flower of life. Anyway, he goes into talking about exactly what is in <laughs> this book, the Egyptian and African cosmology. I hate to clump Africa into one thing because there's many spiritual practices, there's many religions in um in the continent of Africa, so I shouldn't lump them all together. However, just for purposes of this, he talks a little bit about um, Egyptian cosmology. He talks about some of the, the Dogon um, cosmology as well. It's another tribe that I love in Mali. But 
he talks about the connection of sacred geometry in nature, sacred geometry in our body, and how these different beautiful symbols can help us to get to a level, another level of consciousness or to help us manifest things as well. But this is a great one if you're interested in looking into sacred geometry and the connection from, that's another thing. So the flower of life is a symbol that's been found on every continent randomly, like carved in stone in sacred areas. And the more you really look into it, I'm going to allow you to do your research, but the more you look into it, the more you see like, wow, like we are literally sacred geometry. Like our bodies are sacred, guys. They're sacred. <laughs> the last one I'm going to talk about is conversations with the spirit between death and life. And this is by one of my faves, Dolores Cannon. May she transition peacefully as well because she's no longer on the earthly plane. I discovered her pretty late though. Um, I discovered maybe a couple years ago, I just randomly found, I honestly don't remember what, how I found her. I'm, I've been really fascinated all of my life with death, with near, death experiences with um, basically like crossing over or what's happening on the other side, essentially. I just have always been like, what the hell is going on when you die? Where, what happens? Like, do you go to heaven? Do you go to hell? Is there other things going on there? Like other levels? Are you just nothing after you die? What the hell is going on? <laughs> So a little synopsis on Dolores Cannon. She was a hypnotist back in 50s, 60s era. <clears throat> and she literally was just hypnotizing people to help them with the things back in the day that people used to get hypnotized for. Like, oh, I want to stop smoking. Can you hypnotize me? Oh, I want to lose weight. Can you hypnotize me? So that's how she started. But she stopped, she had one patient that all of a sudden just started spewing out things about a weird time period and a, another person. It was like she was talking about a past life. Long story short, Dolores Cannon is one of the biggest or was one of the biggest um, past life regressionists. So if you're into that, really look her up and see what book she has. She has a ton of books and she has a lot of people that have trained under her that now do um, past life regressions. And that's something that I always wanted to do. I always wanted to seek or find out more information about my past lives. I already have some information about it that I've no, I'll say that for another video, but I'm fascinated with past lives and the thought of reincarnation. Uh, so she is talking about her conversations with people that she put under who then discuss what the hell's going on on the other side. Like what's going on in the spirit world? What happens when you die? What's like all those random weird questions that you may have? Because I sure do. I'm an Aquarius. I am very into the occult. I'm very into just learning more about what's out there. I'm into discovering if there's aliens, which I've always believed there were. <laughs> so I'm into all that, like that kind of stuff. But these are just some books that maybe they'll help you. Maybe they won't. Maybe you can, uh, maybe you can get something from them or maybe you can recommend them to someone else if you've already read them as well. So let me know what some of your favorite like self-help spiritual books um, are that helped you along your journey and then we can chat. Yeah. So anyways, like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you watching. My name is Leticia. I'm the owner of Piece of Food and a holistic health coach, and I am here to help you piece together the spiritual with the physical. So, peace. Enjoy your day.